Um, if you're interested in our organization and you'd like to know more or just follow us, we'd appreciate it. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and then of course you can always look at our website. Um, so uh, while there are many, many, many great organizations that advocate for all kinds of accessibility and travel, um, specifically again, All Love Up is looking for accessibility for wheelchairs. Um, Paralyzed Veterans of America is on the cutting front of advocating for this, as well as like other organizations, Muscular Dystrophy Association, the Easter Seals, lots and lots of foundations like the Christopher Reeve Foundation, um, Nidler, you know, lots of organizations that uh, do all kinds of great funding and advocacy for all sorts of accessibility. Um, and we work closely with those organizations. We have good relationships with all of those organizations, and, but specifically the title of our project is the evaluation of wheelchairs and wheelchair tie downs, occupant restraint systems, and occupant protection while in a wheelchair on a transport airplane. And that's the title that we use. That's kind of our formal title when we apply for grants and things like that. So uh, while crash testing hasn't been thoroughly vetted, um, and, and there is one airplane in our nation's history that was modified to ensure the safety, comfort, and accessibility of um, our president, who was in a wheelchair, Franklin Roosevelt. And uh, this is Air Force One, that you are looking at a picture of Air Force One in 1943. And uh, FDR used an elevator to board this plane. The aisles were modified and made wide enough so that he could travel down the aisle in his wheelchair and that he could maneuver around the, the plane freely. Um, the president's wheelchair was not restrained during flight. And I'm not exactly sure how that worked. Um, I'm sure I could do lots of more research and find out how that is. But this, this was all done in 1943. And today's engineers are you know, no less capable and no less interested in making this um, a reality for um, people who use wheelchairs for 100% of their mobility today. There are other instances of individuals being transported in wheelchairs on airplanes. For instance, in, um, of course, we all know about air ambulances. That's a pretty well vetted uh, mode of transportation, but um, it's not quite what we at All Wheels Up are looking for. Every time we want to try, take a trip with um, a family member or one of us who is in a wheelchair, you know, we certainly don't want to engage in air ambulance. That would be far too cost prohibitive. So other situations like um, emergency situation where there's a natural disaster, a hurricane, or a flood, or some, something like that, the military commonly uses cargo planes, such as like a C-130, a C-5, or a C-7. And what they will do is load the passenger in their wheelchair in the cargo plane and then use military tie downs, um, a tie down system that they use to tie down the cargo in the airplane to tie down the wheelchair. So that's interesting. Uh, obviously, that is not meant for um, anyone who wants to travel at leisure or for work. That is also not a viable alternative. But it is a very good example of, you know, it could be done, it can be done, and it gives us a nice little springboard. Um, let's see, before we move on, I do want to mention one more thing. If anyone ever gets to Reagan International Airport, they have a nice little tribute, a monument to SDR. It's his loading room. Um, so while you're at Reagan International Airport, you can actually go into the room where SDR used to sit and wait for his plane. And there's lots, lots of um, you know, like really good pictures and and uh, interesting facts about him using airplanes in a wheelchair. Um, so that is kind of fun for anyone who's there. OK, I have an animation of what our proposed solution looks like. And if you will humor me for just a moment, I am going to try to share my desktop so that I can show you what our animation looks like. All right. 
So I hope you can see this. Here we are at the All Wheels Up website. Kind of a little, this is our first, our home page, a landing page. And here is a, our animation. And I just kind of want to play this and talk about it for a minute. So our animation shows a version of what accessible air travel could look like. Um, this was posted to our Facebook and our Twitter page. It's been viewed over 157,000 times. Um, why this is important is that there are people who have never considered this as a possibility. So when we're talking to um, individuals who maybe don't have a family member or don't know anything about how a wheelchair or the operation of a wheelchair works or what this would look like, have no idea of what this would look like on an airplane. It is something that we can use to say, so this, this is a possibility, like this might be how it works. Perhaps we could move, remove one or more seats and a wheelchair user could use their power chair or wheelchair and then be tied down in this particular way. So that is kind of what we at All Wheels Up use to show people um, who maybe are not so well informed about how uh, it would work. Okay, so here we are back at my presentation. I hope that you can all see. Um, like I said, that little animation has been viewed over 157,000 times. We are um, planning to prepare additional animations showing things like um, what it would look like to have an elevator entry option or um, how it would look as a rear, uh, if you entered the airplane in, in the rear and if we did it from uh, the jetway or if a wheelchair of the seat uh, spot was in the first row or in the last row or over the wing or, you know, different animations. So um, you're welcome to keep an eye out and we'll, we'll hopefully have some more of those. These are very simple. Um, it's probably not actually what it would look like, but it does help us to illustrate because the picture is worth a thousand words. Um, and by the way, uh, All Wheels Up is not asking any airline or airline manufacturer to retrofit planes. Anything that would um, come about through our project would be designs that would be included with airplanes that are not on the market yet. Tara, Tara can I ask you, um, this is Stephen here, um, can I ask you to um, Describe well. The the animation was a little bit choppy, but um, maybe for those, if there's anybody that um, uh, that wasn't able to see it, would you just maybe describe what the animation uh, showed with the um, with the images? Absolutely, no problem at all. Thank you. So what our animation shows is it shows um, a row of airline seats, and one seat is removed. So that seat would be taken away and stowed either under, you know, in the belly of the plane or in the storage capacity there on the airplane. And a power chair backed into that spot and then tied down with a four-point restraint. So, um, again, it's an elementary animation. But it does show that a Airline seat could be removed. The air, the uh, wheelchair user could back into that spot. There would be a restraint tie down clip already attached to the floor of the aircraft. Once the user got their wheelchair into place, it would be tied down with a four point restraint. So again, you're welcome to go to All Wheels Up website and take a look at that. Um, and I, I hope I described it adequately. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Many of you may or may not know that the ADA, the American Disabilities Act, or the Air Carriers Access Act, neither one of those um, really truly cover accessible air travel for wheelchair users. Um, they obviously cover their, 
there can't be any discrimination. But there is really nothing that um, describes the use of a wheelchair on an airplane. There has been some progress made recently on this. Um, on June 8th, Senator Tammy Baldwin of Wisconsin, with a group of other legislators, introduced amendments to the ACAA, which are very exciting. Um, the first one is to strengthen the um, ACA enforcement to include specific protections of the rights of passengers with disabilities. Um, additionally, to ensure airplanes are designed to accommodate people with disabilities and airlines meet accessibility standards, including safe and effective boarding and deplaning. And again, this is for people with all disabilities. Um, number three, visually accessible announcements and better stowage options for assistive devices, which I think is absolutely wonderful. Um, the number four, improve access to seating accommodations. So obviously at All Wheels Up, we are watching that one closely, and it's something that we are very interested in. And then lastly, their proposal is to close service gaps and air travel for passengers with disabilities. And again, that is all disabilities. So this is a proposal. It will work its way through our, our Congress um, and um, our legislatures, and we'll see what happens with that. But it is an exciting step, and there are people who are interested in helping those with disabilities travel safely and comfortably. So this slide, I was thought it was very interesting, and we always talk about this at All Wheels Up. It's the only paragraph in all of the FAA regulations on safe travel for someone with a severe disability or a physical limitation who uses a wheelchair. Um, the FAA recommendation, and this was written many years ago, it really shows how little the FAA at that point had understanding of someone with a severe disability. And it's not a safe seating option. Um, for quadriplegics, we'll prefer cabin wall seating as providing more support on one side. Quadriplegics will prefer cabin wall seating as providing more support on one side. And reading that and thinking about it, it's obvious that whoever wrote this was not familiar with a quadriplegic or how their body functions. And this is obviously not a safe choice for anyone who has um, a mobility disability. Things are changing. Uh, thank goodness, and things are changing pretty quickly. And at All Wheels Up, we're very excited about it, and we are keeping our eyes on it. And one of the things that is changing is the FAA Reauthorization Act is up for vote this year. And this bill was created back in 2015. It has not been passed yet. Versions and small versions, truncated versions of it have been passed just to keep the FAA um, operating. It will be voted on again this summer. When it was first created, um, it was just another bill about like drones and drone regulations, air traffic control, um, you know, asphalt on tarmac, you know, really, really interesting stuff that the general population has a lot of interest in, right? Well, the, our friends over at the Paralyzed Veterans um, Association just thought that that was not enough. And so what they did was they authored four amendments about accessible air travel. The one at, that we are particularly interested in at All Wheels Up is um, Amendment Section 3116. Uh, Senator Bill Nelson from Florida uh, is the author and the sponsor of that bill. And he very graciously included all four of those amendments from the Paralyzed Veterans Association in this new bill. And hopefully it will get passed. But this Section 3116 is particularly for the study um, of in-cabin wheelchair restraint systems. And I'm going to read it to you. Um, it's just it's a small paragraph, so I hope I don't lose you here, but it might be a little boring, but hopefully I can make it interesting. This section would require the Architectural and Transportation Barriers Compliance Board and the Department of Transportation to conduct a study to determine the way in which particular individuals with significant disabilities who use wheelchairs, including power wheelchairs, can be accommodated through in-cabin wheelchairs chair restraint systems. So obviously, this is very important to us. Um, 
conduct a study for individuals with significant disabilities who use a wheelchair, including power wheelchair, how can they be accommodated through in-cabin wheelchair restraint systems? So hopefully uh, what this means to us is that the Architectural Transportation Barriers Compliance Board and the DOT will get together and uh, really take stock in how a, a good study can be done that will facilitate the use of your wheelchair in the cabin of an airplane. Um, in 2016, a temporary measure of this bill was passed, but the four amendments that the PDA wrote were not in the bill. Um, the bill was voted on um, again this, it will be voted on again this summer. And the final revisions, it was just announced today that the final revisions of this bill are ready. And Senator Bill Nelson of Florida has been instrumental in keeping all four of these amendments in the bill. And hopefully it will get voted on this summer and hopefully passed. And we will get some good, solid data and information on how wheelchairs in the cabin will be used going forward. All right, so how did all this get started? Well, my colleague, Michelle Irwin, has a son who is, has a significant disability and is in a wheelchair. And she took a trip with her son and her family and went through the process of transferring from the safety and convenience of his own wheelchair into the uh, surrogate wheelchair there at the airport and then transferring into the seat and then having the wheelchair stowed under the belly of the plane and in cargo and, and the damage that happened to the wheelchair. And she just thought, okay, this is a crazy system. And clearly, the right people just don't know that this is happening. And she took it upon herself, like, oh, well, I'll just tell them. I mean, surely they just don't know because this is so easy to fix. You know, my son can ride in my van. My son can go on a public bus. My son can take a ferry, but he can't get on an airplane. Well, Clearly, the right people just don't know that this is happening. So looking back at that now, she laughs at herself and she says, oh my goodness, you know, how, how naive was I to take on this project? But she's been very committed to it and um, she wants her son to be able to fly in the safety and dignity of his own wheelchair. So she started doing some uh, research. And one of the first things that she came across was an article from QStream which said that their particular uh, tie-down system could pass a 20G crash test, which led her to wonder, well, what does an airplane seat have to test at to be compliant? So after doing some uh, research, what we ended up finding was that Q-strength restraint system could pass a 20G crash test. An airplane seat only has to pass a 16G crash test in order to be compliant with FAA regulations. So we started conversations with the FAA and initially in their research and development project uh, department and they, they were very interested in the project and they said, oh, that sounds, you know, very, very worthy, but we're not funding it. So, um, Good, you know, good idea, but let's see how far you can get on your own. So with this information, uh, All Wheels Up was started and created, and the initiative to crash test wheelchairs for commercial flight, we were going to just do it on our own. Um, we actively engaged to work in funding um, and to put all the right people together in all the right rooms so that the wheelchair manufacturers the wheelchair restraint people and the crash test facility could work together to perform a, a proof of concept test. And uh, what our crash test has looked like so far is we have crash test the four-point restraint system, which is a QRT 360. Um, a surrogate wheelchair was used. It's the same surrogate wheelchair that's used in automobile crash test. Um, Obviously, the dynamics of an automobile crash test and an airplane crash test are very similar. There are some differences, but being that no one else has ever crash tested for a wheelchair for in-flight use, a wheelchair does not exist that is specifically for air travel. 
So what we had to do was take the, the next closest thing available, which is a surrogate wheelchair that is used for automobile crash tests. Um, and I'm going to go back to this previous slide because there's something very interesting here in this slide. It says um, a 16G longitudinal longitudinal or a 14G vertical test is sufficient to substantiate the attachment to between structural members with a different design philosophy or variations with in the same design philosophy. Okay, we read that and said, what's a design philosophy? So we figure that out. The design philosophy is that a airplane floor has a very similar L track system which is used in public buses and vans and school buses. So the floor of the airplane and the floor of the bus are built very, very similarly. Well, that's the same design philosophy. So we're like, OK, we're on a roll now. We understand this, that if an l track can be used in an airplane and an l track can be used in a bus. And it works in a bus, well, can't it work in an airplane? So we had our first um, epiphany, our first moment of, wow, this might actually really work. And we were very excited about it. So let's see. We decided to test that QRT360 first, and we tested that last year. Like I said, it is the same four-point restraint system. Let me show you. This is our plan of action. This is what we decided to do. Is we knew we had to do some research, organization, and sharing of the data. We feel like we've done that. An initial blueprint for the first study. What that involved was, again, getting our uh, wheelchair restraint manufacturers in our crash test facility in the same room to say, how, you know, how are we going to do this? They had to fabricate a sled for us, meaning there was no um, platform to use to test wheelchairs on airplanes, because obviously nobody had ever done that before. We did our crash test at an FAA-approved facility. Um, that's already been done for this first round of testing. We're in the process of doing our data analysis and creation of a standards committee. So those are, that's kind of our plan of action and where we are in our plan of action. Um, our testing, uh, the FAA has been instrumental in providing us with guidance on what to test and how to test. Um, so one of the things that they asked us to do was a 10 degree yaw and a 60, de de uh, 60 degree pitch. And the deliverables from those crash tests are the raw data, the photos, and videos of the crash test. So this would be something similar to what you've seen on TV when you see a commercial with a car, you know, being slammed into a wall. It's pretty interesting. This is the slide that I've been dying to get to because I really want to show you this. So you will see this is our crash test dummy. He is in his surrogate wheelchair that I've already talked about. This is the sled that is used to uh, essentially hammer of this wheelchair and this dummy into a wall. So a, a huge um, battering ram type thing is pulled back, smashed into this sled, and then this sled travels very quickly down a, uh, a set of tracks and slams into the wall, and then we collect data about it. So this is our testing facility. It's a high testing facility, and it's Cal Span and is in Buffalo, New York. Uh, they're an aer aerospace crash test facility, and they, they crash test all kinds of stuff that we're particularly interested in their um, aerospace crash testing. So with input and guidance from the FAA, the aerospace engineers at Cal Span created a unique blueprint for crash testing wheelchairs and wheelchair restraint systems. We're hoping that this blueprint that they have created for us will be just the first brick and many that will build comprehensive standards for wheelchair accessible travel. When we went to CalSpan and we said we want to crash wheelchairs for in-flight use, they were like, how do we do that? You know, their engineers were very interested in it. They said, what are the requirements? You know, we have these um, specifications for airplanes, but not specifications for wheelchairs or for wheelchair restraints. So that's at the point where um, all wheels up said, well, we'll get the Q, the, uh, Q strength, our you know, uh, company that does you know, lots and lots of different kinds of wheelchair restraint tie-down systems into the room. And, and so it was, um, it was very, very interesting to see these engineers from both groups 
trying very hard to speak the same language. And of course the FAA was involved and they gave us all kinds of interesting information um, to help these engineers come up with developing and building this sled that would accommodate wheelchair pat down systems, a wheelchair, and a crash test dummy. Okay, so like I said, this what you see here is the QRT360 um, wheelchair occupant restraint securement system. It's a four-point tie-down system. Um, it's really heavy duty. It's automatically retractable, just like a seat belt in a car. Um, it's engineered and built to meet the requirements of WC18, and it is compatible with WC19 wheelchairs. Um, this is where it was suggested that we start our testing, but this is certainly not where we are stopping our testing. Um, this test is, it was a, um, a proof of concept study, and in research world that means prove that this concept works and then continue to do additional testing after that. But as long as we could prove that the um, restraints did not pull up from the floor, that the wheelchair did not tip over or disintegrate, that the straps didn't uh, rip on impact, uh, the FAA said if you can kind of go through some of those more rudimentary questions and answer them, then we will be supportive of you continuing your crash testing. So I'm happy to tell you that none of those things happened. Our wheelchair did not turn over. The uh, restraint systems did not pull up from the floors. The fabric on the actual tie down did not rip. And there were a couple of other uh, qualifying factors that I can't remember right now. But we uh, passed all of those. So we have proved this concept. This concept is provable that, that wheelchairs in a crash test I mean, in a crash, in an air, airplane crash, could actually be a viable option for seating. So moving on, um, we need to do a number of tests to conclude the effectiveness of the restraints. Um, in addition, we need to do more forward and additional tests, such as turbulent testing. Um, we also need to test the wheelchairs themselves, um, and we need to test additional restraint systems. So we are working on funding for our next round of testing, but other things that we will test is um, the QLK-150 with the door system, the Cube, and the Quantum 2 strength system. So I want to show you what those look like and talk a little bit about those. This is the QLK-150, and this is the door system. These are used in, in conjunction with one another. There is the potential. These are widely available on the market. Um, you can get them today, maybe if some of you out there may be using them in your own bands or you know somebody who is. Um, this, this is a, a, a good candidate for something that could be used in an airplane to tie down a wheelchair. This is also, this is the cube. This is commonly used on trains and commonly used on ferry boats. And it obviously, um, those hooks come out and clip around the wheelchair and hold the wheelchair safe. So, that, again, is commonly available on the market and being used in mass transit now, and it is something that we will test for uh, use in an airplane. This Q-Strength Quantum, this is very, very interesting. It is a new product on the market. It is probably um, a viable option for airlines. Um, what it does is those arms, there are, you can see the arms kind of at the bottom of the picture, and these arms, when the, when the chair user backs into this, um, those arms come down on both sides of the wheelchair and then they squish the wheelchair together and they apply so many pounds of pressure where the wheelchair is not able to, to move. Now this is a scooter that we're looking at right now. And a scooter is a good example, but it would also work the same. Um, with any kind of wheelchair. I, I, in, right now, preliminarily, I will tell you that I don't know if scooters will be part of the project plan to get on airplanes, but wheelchairs and power chairs certainly are. But this uh, this Q-Strength, this quantum system that they have here, um, it's very futuristic. It's kind of like getting on a Disney ride. It's, it's literally um, pressurized, and it's a hydraulic system, so it, it's pretty neat, and you know it's potentially a good candidate. So um,
one of the reasons why it's so important for us to test the number of um, restraints that I have just shown to you is because the FAA and the Flight Attendants Association and the S um, the SEIU has told us, and they have confirmed to us several times in, in many different ways, that the flight attendants who fall under the union don't really want to take on securement of a wheelchair as part of their jobs because there is a lot of liability involved in that. There's workman comp injury involved in that, and they're not necessarily, um, you know, just waiting to take on another job. There are um, the wheelchair attendants who help wheelchair users get through the airport and transfer out of their chair and into an airline seat, they would be able to take on um, this, you know, helping someone to tie themselves down or to get into some kind of a restraint system in their own wheelchair, but it would take additional training and obviously that means additional expense for airlines and the human error and that could be greater than you know, the risk that would be associated with it. So we're not exactly sure how that's going to happen. But one of the reasons that we want to try and test all these different versions of currently available restraints is because wheelchair users obviously use their wheelchair each and every day. They know how to operate the try down and restraint systems. Family members or personal care attendants who will be traveling with them know how to use the tie downs and the restraints. And they could probably do a fine job of securing themselves into um, a, a spot on an airplane that was for, you know, their individual use. You know, their, their are, you know, sisters and brothers and parents and caretakers do this multiple times a day and it just doesn't make um, any sense to say someone else would need to do it for them, that there's the potential that doing it themselves is probably a better a better option. So uh, moving on, how does this affect the wheelchair community in respect to the people who work in the wheelchair manufacturing or standards making? So new restraints. Um, our hope is that restraints do not fail testing, that none of the restraints that we are testing, hopefully they won't fail, but potentially they will. Um, Q strain is certain that they will not fail. I'm pretty confident that they will not fail. Um, the QR uh, T360 did not fail and it performed actually very good. Um, we are committed to moving forward with additional research and development um, with the FAA with their specific uh, requirements that they impose upon us. Um, Wills all, all Wills Up has already had the crash test report from SAE on military tie-down systems used on military cargo transport planes. And what we're planning on doing is taking that data and comparing it to the data that we um, use, that we get from our own crash testing and seeing where variances occur and where um, there need to be potential um, improvements made. So potentially, the wheelchair restraints that we are using right now that are currently available on the market and widely used already Potentially, none of those will be the correct restraint system for an airplane. But potentially, what we would be able to do is take the good out of each one of them and then develop something new. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, again, wheelchair designs, very, very sticky subject, lots of opinions on this. All wheels up, our, uh, our mission has not gotten us to the point where we are testing wheelchairs yet. But obviously, wheelchairs, power chairs, and scooters all have a wide range of feasibility for use on an airplane. Some, the collapsible wheelchairs, are probably never going to be sturdy enough. Power wheelchairs are heavy, and uh, there's a lot of calculations that have to go into how much a plane weighs before it can take off in According to airlines, it's very important to know how much each of the wheelchairs will weigh. You know, batteries are an issue. Um, with scooters, there's multiple issues because of how big they are, because of the seat and all. Um, there's all kinds of stuff. But again, there's the potential that after some, some good testing that there would be a wheelchair that is designed specifically for use in an airplane. 
and a consumer who wants to travel and uses a wheelchair could use that wheelchair, buy that wheelchair at their own expense or, you know, with the um, help of someone like Ability Tools or, you know, God forbid, I, I say the word Medicaid. I, I almost take to say the word Medicaid and wheelchair expense in the same sentence. But um, much like the use of a car seat for an infant or a child in an airplane, if you choose to fly your child, you may also choose to buy a car seat that is compatible with FAA regulations for transporting that child on an airplane. Well, in potentially in some number of years, you as a consumer who may or may not want to fly on an airline could or could not choose to purchase a wheelchair that has been approved by the FAA for in-flight use. So we'll see what happens there. Like I said, we've not really gotten to wheelchair designs yet, but we are working with wheelchair manufacturers to uh, kind of assess their, um, their willingness to cooperate. Um, air travel regulations. When a bill is passed, the DOT will be issuing post to a special committee for accessible flight. I do feel that it is pertinent that certain organizations and universities should have a role in guiding this committee due to the real knowledge that they would be able to bring to the project. We as a community cannot afford to have this project sidelined because the wrong people are discussing wheelchair and wheelchair restraint crash testing. Um, currently, to my knowledge, nobody with real experience has been asked to join um, any committees that are developing these standards, so it is, it's imperative that we have our advocacy organizations and our research organizations and our universities who do um, design, uh, accessible design, are involved in these conversations because obviously we're the end user of these products and it is important for us to know uh, what kind of rules are being implemented or forced on us. Um, so there's going to be some new area studies within universities. Obviously right now universal design is, is, is well represented in the universities. Engineering well represented in the universities. Aerospace engineering well represented. In, no, there's been really no effort to combine those to specifically discuss um, air travel. The University of Kansas has done some really progressive work that we're very impressed with. Um, there is a, let's see, um, Tree University of Michigan doing some very, very impressive things there. There's also um, Buff uh, University in Buffalo, New York, and oh my goodness, I cannot believe it that their name escapes me right now, but it's something very simple and I, I, my mind has just blanked. But there, a lot universities are doing some really exceptional work, it, again, it's going to take some sort of stimulus to get um, new areas of studies implemented at universities that are specifically for air travel, accessible air travel. Um, so those are some of the things that I kind of wanted to cover about how this will affect technology in our community. We will definitely need more testing and all wheels up, you know, is, is available to do this. Our biggest uh, constraint is obviously the funding for this. This is very, very expensive and so far we get a few grants from here and there, but uh, we have a, a, a whole grant writing process that we are, that has its own issues, let's just say, and if anybody is interested, in uh, helping with that. I, I, please email me separately and I'll tell you some of our, our issues with grant writing and some of the, the problems that we're coming up against. Um, but anyway, as always, you know, all it takes is money. <laughs> so some other things that we would want to test are wheelchair to fake some models. Headrest, this is very important. Um, to make sure that, you know, the head of a person who uses a wheelchair is not going to be uh, compromised in any way. Seat belts, not lap belts that are currently available on airplanes, but actual, maybe a five-point harness or a four-point harness or something, not, not lap belts, but seat belts need to be tested. Batteries, while batteries are already approved for in-flight, um, 
it still continues to be an issue, and we still continue to kind of back, you know fight that battle. But but um, it's batteries does come up quite frequently. Uh, aircraft floors and the, the the plane, the actual floor of the plane, how thick it is, you know how it's designed, how it's welded, if it's flammable, not flammable, all kinds of issues with that. That's definitely something that aircraft manufacturers are responsible for, and uh, you know, are working with. So our next steps, what kind of what we'd like to do is form some additional partnerships. We have some really great formal and informal partnerships. Resna, ISO, universities are just very, very important in this process. Wheelchair manufacturers, um, airline manufacturers, you know, lots, lots of people who we like to form partnerships with. Funding, we need government funding, we need outside funding, we need individual funding. I mean, I'll just say it again, you know, money, you can do anything if you have enough money. We need um, additional testing, the continued pulse testing, the turbulence testing, testing additional restraint testing, and, and static restraint testing, or static testing. We have proposed a coalition, and we'll see how far we get on this, but uh, we, and we actually have made some very good progress on forming a coalition between the airlines, All Will the ANSI, CMA, Access Board, Department of Transportation, FAA, the ISO, plenty of universities who are interested, Resna and Q-Strain, um, and other manufacturers of wheelchair restraint systems and wheelchairs. Um, we're certainly wanting to form a coalition with the right people um, so the right people are involved in the conversation. So in conclusion, the FAA, the CAA, um, everyone who has a stake in the game says that accessible flight is possible. Um, there needs to be some concentrated effort on making it happen. Um, here at All Wheels Up, we think, we know, we prove, we've proved it's possible. We need to continue to work in multiple, multiple facets to make it possible. Um, I just kind of want to throw out some thank yous there. Q-Strain, obviously, been very instrumental in this. Calspan, a terrific partner. The FAA has been very, very helpful to us. We've received grants from the ISTAT Foundation, Light of the World. Unico, um, I think by now we have a couple of others out there. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't uh, think of who all of them are, but there, there are so many people who are interested and involved in this project, and we are thankful to everyone who, who gives us any kind of help. That we, It is a huge issue, and all help is needed. Um, I also want to thank Ability Tools for asking us to present today, and um, I hope that we have uh, made you proud and that you like our presentation and that you, um, you know, are interested in continuing to hear about our research and what we're doing to make air travel accessible. So I am perfectly happy to take any questions that you have now and I'll be um, obviously available for the next few minutes to answer questions. You can also email me or um, just get in touch with me and I'll be able to answer questions offline also. Tara, this is Stephen. Thank you so much. Um, that was a great presentation, um, and you guys are doing great work over there. Uh, it looks like we do have a question um, from Jim uh, Sincer, uh from Santa Barbara, ILRC. Um, it says, our executive director would benefit. Have you considered a universal design in the air chair that would be provided by the airline while the process unfolds. Yeah, we actually have talked to them about that. And we do like the idea of a universal design in the air chair. Um, the airlines obviously are not just chomping at the bit to make this happen. You know, when they look at this, they see expense, they see time, they see money, they see all kinds of barriers to making it happen. So there are a couple of very good designs, like an in-the-air chair, um, that would be you know, provided by the airline. And we've seen some of those. They, they really look like a good solution. Um, not only an in-the-air chair would be good, but 
in addition to that, we would need to have a restraint system for that in the air chair. And ultimately, I'll have to tell you, our goal at All Wheels Up is that a person would be able to travel in the safety and comfort of their own chair. Um, as you may know, wheelchairs are designed specifically for the wheelchair user, and their specific accommodations are met by that chair. So if we're going to like wish and dream, we're going to wish and dream big. And our wish and dream big is that you would be able to travel in your own chair because it's the safest place for you to be. Um, so we don't necessarily um, try to push for an airline provided in the air chair. And in fact, we're not pushing airlines to do anything at this point. We do have a good relationship with the airlines. And they come to us oftentimes and say, you know, this company contacted me, or this person from Italy has this design, and we say, man, that looks good. You know, how are you going to do that? Um, but we, we, that is not necessarily within our bailiwick. What we really want is for people to be able to travel in the comfort and safety of their own chair. Well, of all the process unfolds, it's probably, a, you know, a, something that could be considered. Thank you for your question. Awesome. Thank you, Tara. Um, did, and did anybody else have any other questions? Um, feel free to type them in to the chat box or use your uh, microphone. Um, turn on your microphone uh, button uh, in the participant panel if you do. Stephen, I'll tell you, I am so thankful that you let me uh, drone on for about an hour about accessible air travel. I hope that somebody who listened to us today knows a little bit more than they did an hour ago and that um, something that I've said has benefited them or struck a nerve or at least will um, have them thinking about how this would actually work. Yeah, no, I, I, I really appreciate you uh, doing it. I mean, I, I recently uh, traveled with a colleague of mine who's a wheelchair user to DC. It was last month actually, and I realized like what people have to go through in wheelchairs through the airports, and I mean through the shuttle at the airport, and it was um, and the hotel as well. But um, but yeah, it it it's definitely needed. So I think what you guys are doing is is really great work. So I appreciate what you guys are doing and that you took the time to, to, to do the, the webinar. So I, I found it really interesting myself and good. And I think and I'll, and I'll, I'll be talking to, you know, um, our other chair users here and, you know, other to see what kind of, you know, advocacy work they can do um, as well, as, you know, for our, our uh, um, management here to see what, you know what what they've done or what they if they can get involved with this as well. So, well, that's uh, fabulous. Well, as as I discussed in my presentation, that FAA Reauthorization Act is coming up for vote at some point this summer. Um, you know, just today, Senator Bill Nelson said he feels like it's ready to go and they're about ready to present it. So I'm really excited about that. And at the point that um, it, it does make it to Congress and it does make it through the Senate. Um, there will be some, some very fast progress made on this and we will be in, in a good position. So I would encourage everyone to, you know, check out our Twitter, follow us on Facebook, um, keep posted because there's the potential that we will send out a call to say, please, contact your senator, contact your, your congressman, and tell them that this is a very important bill that needs to be passed.